Hey guys, so I've been watching a show called Euphoria and like every other teenager, I'm obsessed. Someone put it this way, but Euphoria is like the Billie Eilish of TV shows, okay? Let me tell you why. I'm actually going to peel apart a story of one of the characters named Maddie. Maddie is the it girl. If you had someone cool in high school, imagine her, but like, on steroids. Maddie is a star. Ever since she was born, she was described in the show to be super, super dramatic and charismatic, and she could get the attention of the entire school. Now, with Maddie, we have learned that her child was pretty rough. She didn't have a close connection to her father, and her family life was really tough. And with that, she really did seek a lot of attention from guys that weren't her father to fill that hole inside of her. L literally. <laughs> Okay, that was stupid. And we kind of learned more about our character and we thought that Maddie was super confident, charismatic, but inside she was actually broken and really, really empty. This is just an example of one of the character stories. If you're someone who makes stories online, creates video, I think we can all learn from storytelling. And today we're gonna teach you how the best TV shows in the world make the best stories that compel a user to watch all the way through. If you're someone who wants to learn how, all you gotta do is keep on watching. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Jane, and if you're new here, I'm an 18-year-old entrepreneur that combines marketing and psychology. And today, we have another episode of A Logical Fallacy. Today's logical fallacy is number four in the series, and we're talking about anecdotal. Ooh. All right, so what is an anecdotal fallacy? Well, by definition, you use a personal experience or example to make an argument or evidence. I mean, this might be a stretch, but I think anecdotal is the most powerful by far strategy any marketer or YouTuber can use. And I believe just by human connection, we are drawn to stories. We don't care how much something is, if it's valuable and there's a story behind it, that's why we buy Gucci, right? That's why we buy the name brands. And I think story and brand is just so, so hard to like nail down. So I feel like if there's any resources and pieces of information I can learn, we should use it. So I really wanted to break down Euphoria, which is a TV show on HBO with Zendaya, who's an actor. And she's basically this character that portrays a high school teenager it's super relatable but what made this plot really really amazing was the storytelling and i said this in the intro but i think so often we need to be able to capture attention online and if you're someone who's curious to know how the big players do it in the industry you know what's the secrets to create an amazing video that gets millions of millions of hits let's break down how to use anecdotal strategies for your videos all right so the first part of today's video is a breakdown of what storytelling is the second part is how your brain reacts to those certain steps which is something that you guys actually aren't mostly aware about so i'm going to really spill the tea on that and for the third part i'm going to teach you guys how to apply it for your channel i think the number one question i get actually in the series which i'm floored by your guys's comments thank you so much for the love of this episodes but a lot of people want to know how to apply each logical fallacy for their channel type for example like how to execute one logical fallacy for a beauty channel so i'm going to say that to the end if you guys want a breakdown i have a surprise for y'all to um execute for your own own brand so let's start with part one all right so we're gonna look at the three act structure i literally just pulled this out of my ass for my sixth grade middle school drama class but um if you aren't aware all stories have a beginning middle and end now to make this shit a little bit more advanced i realized that euphoria was more complex than just three parts right all good stories have three acts but in each act there's still so many layers we can uncover I think you guys can see that in each act, there's almost like ups and downs. And by the way, guys, an up is when the plot gets happy and a down is when the character becomes sad. So if we were in like math class, just imagine the Y axis is emotion. And I think so often we have to make sure our character goes up and down up and down. And Euphoria is amazing at that. I honestly challenge you to watch any show, literally and see how long is a character happy for, then sad. Now, why do script writers or YouTubers even use this technique to always make the character happy, then sad? Why are we always going up and down in a storyline? Now, you guys, we're gonna bring it all back to episode two of this Logical Fallacy series. I mentioned that our brain works on threats and rewards. Now, if you can guess, why would a story writer go up and down with the character's emotion? because it signals threats and rewards. And when your brain signals rewards, it releases a chemical called 
dopamine. If there's a number one thing I would give critique on any person's YouTube video or piece of film they made, it's the fact that they don't really go up and down with the character. Because if you're happy too long, people get fucking bored. But if you're sad too long, people get fucking bored. Man, this is really fucking hard. I know what you're gonna say. You're like, Jade, this is gonna make me clench my ass. I feel like this is so staged. Am I gonna be have to be fake on YouTube? No, there's a way to make it organic and feel natural without scripting every single line you say. So today I'm gonna go over how Euphoria makes an amazing plot without feeling too rigid. Let's dive in. All right, so like I said, the most important things you need to know in the three act structure are these, these two main points. The initial incident, and the plot twist. The initial incident is always located in the very beginning of act one. Basically in the very start of the TV show, we realize that there's an initial problem or incident with a character. I'm gonna break down Maddie. So in the initial incident, as I said before, Maddie is someone who was neglected by her father and we learned that from this scene. I really wanna break that down. When Maddie was fighting with her father, I really want you guys to see her emotion, the way she dressed, the colors. My god, do you guys notice when the character is happy, the colors are a lot more warmer and brighter, but when Maddie was fighting, it was very moody blues, like very dark moody tones, and she wasn't wearing as much makeup. I think we know Maddie for this type of look, but we get to get a sense of her real insides when she's fighting with her mom. And I think what's really important is that aspect. Euphoria is really, really good at matching the emotion of the scene with the character's appearance and overall tone. And this might be very, very complicated, but let me give you more practical examples. For example, if you're filming a video about a get ready with me and you're a YouTuber, maybe show your face with no makeup, obviously, right? When you just got out of bed and when you're explaining your insecurities, make it come from a place that's warm, inviting, less of a way that's scripted and super preppy, right? Talk a little slower. So you can kind of use Euphoria as an example, which is on extreme set budget, but apply it to your own channel. By the way, I've actually received a lot of comments from you guys saying you really want a step-by-step -step analysis for your channel. If you guys want a one-on-one -on -one channel analysis with me, I will link below where you can purchase a slot. I think I'm gonna open up only 20, so run while you can. But if you guys can't afford to invest in your brand, don't worry, you guys. Seriously, I created something called PBJ, which is my app that helps you grow your brand. It's basically a personal assistant for social media. So if you wanna get reminded, I don't know, get some roasted feedback on your account, we have a free version. But if you're looking for someone that's like one-on-one, -on -one, hold your hand, I'll be there for you too. So yeah, I'll link those two options below for people who want more in-depth help after this YouTube video. I'm not trying to sound salesy, but this is all free resources and I wanna help you as much as I can. I know this sounds kind of, ow, my foot's falling asleep. Okay, yeah, you guys are probably getting bored as fuck because my foot's literally just fell asleep talking about my brands. So I'm gonna keep diving back into the video, but if you are so far enjoying it, just make sure you give this video a like. Okay, no more promo. Okay, so going back into the plot, the second most important thing you have to know in storytelling is the plot twist. So in Euphoria, the Maddie character goes through a huge plot twist and we find out that her boyfriend, Nate, is abusive and he goes to jail. So what happened throughout the plot was pretty stable, like they were fighting, they were kissing, they were making up. But when he, her boyfriend went to jail, everything changed. The mood changed. I think even Maddie changed as a character. She was no longer wearing makeup. She was literally in a hoodie, just really looking sad. And a lot of the emotions she had was just this like really famous bitch resting bitch face you can see. And during the plot twist, basically the character transforms from her original state to her new form. Now, a lot of the times it's mostly positive. Someone goes from bad to good, but a lot of the times we can go from mood good to bad. And it doesn't really matter. The whole point of the plot twist is the character needs to change in their own transformation. So they have to go from one emotion to another. So I'm gonna give you guys an example. Say you make music. I used to be a violinist. So I remember when we were playing music, we would go through the chorus, the verses, but when we hit the bridge, the entire mood changed. where the whole tune becomes in a weird land to kind of keep the user enticed because it keeps, again, the attention up. When there's an influx and up and down, your brain pays attention to that, right? When there's an inflection point, when you make a quick change, 
that's when your brain actually pays attention so you don't click off. This is why it's so, so important in music, your art, your videos, to always have these ups and downs. If you're not consistently having, you know, in the beginning, which is the introduction of the conflict and the plot twist, do you see you can lose people's attention. The whole goal is to go from A to C. Take a viewer from the start to the end. And the only way is to bring them through the up and down journey. So I always remember when you are writing your own script or you guys can actually use the script I made for you. I'll put the link below if you want to download it. It's, it's free. Make sure you think about the two most important parts, the introduction conflict and then the plot twist. And when you think about that, the whole goal is to bring the character and the viewer up and down to learn how this person transforms. So I really wanted to thank my sixth grade drama teacher for teaching these things and also the show Euphoria because they do a really, really good example and they can explain it way better than I can. So I highly recommend checking out those two resources in addition to downloading this little graph I made for you. <laughs> All right, you're probably like, hey Jay, that's cool. I wanna strip everything, but how do you do that without feeling like you're clenching your ass? You know, I don't wanna seem fake. This seems like a lot of work. Now, trust me, I don't want you guys to take the script and start like reading it off a paper when you're talking to your viewers. And I think all filmmakers know that that's not the <laughs> message I'm trying to say at all. But I think my biggest tip is to remember that you're not gonna go from wrong to write. I'm pretty sure Steven Spielberg didn't go from baby to filmmaker. He went from baby to one years old, two, three, four, five. He took a step one at a time. And I want you guys to think about this in your own brand. So often I feel like we're searching and scrolling on YouTube for how to grow and like we want to consume it all at once and then we feel suffocated. It's so important just to not do all that shit. Honestly, if there's only thing, if there's like one thing you take away from this entire video, it's just this. Learn how to improve. 1% better than your last video. Learn how to get 1% better than yesterday. And I repeat, do not feel like you need to write everything down, script it to the freaking shit. Like just pick one thing you learn from this video, whether it's you learn to have more colors and emotion in the beginning to reflect the emotion, or you just learn to, hey, fuck, I'm not doing any of this shit. Maybe I should try it out. I think so often, I know you watching this video, you won't apply anything I'm saying because it's overwhelming and it seems like it's not doable. But I'm telling you, just pick one thing that you learned and apply it tomorrow. And then after that, you can apply the next thing you learned tomorrow. The whole point is not going from wrong to right. It's going from wrong to less wrong. And I hope throughout this journey of your personal brand, you don't feel that pressure to always perform amazingly on the spot. I think everyone starts from somewhere and don't feel discouraged if you don't get it the first time. All right, guys, I love you so, so much. You guys know that I built this channel to help all creators thrive. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let it below, let it rain. I look at every single comment you type. So shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. All right, guys, if you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. My foot literally fell asleep again. Like, I'm so sorry if I'm boring. You got to let me know if I'm boring or not because I literally can't feel it. Okay, we're back. All right, guys, like I said again, if you want a logical fallacy analysis on your channel, I will link the calendar to book it. I will only have 20 spots and then maybe I'll open it up more if you guys really enjoyed it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you for being here. Follow me on Instagram, tag me on Instagram if you enjoyed this video. Literally the only way we grew this channel was from you guys sharing it. Like I checked my analytics for the past few videos and a majority of it was just you texting your friends this link, which is crazy. So yeah, if you wanna text this link to someone that might find it interesting, I don't know. I don't know if you're a fan of Euphoria. My favorite character is Maddie. And yeah, I really love you guys so much. Catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.